Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Um, so in the last two videos, the first I gave an overview of everything that's going on on this panel, and the second I went through the left-hand side, and now in this one I'm going to go through the right-hand side. And the first thing that we see here is metric and category weightings panel. I'll click on that. And what this area is designed for is that for each of the fitness testing metrics is we can assign a weighting to them. And we can categorize them into different categories and when we're creating scores, let's say out of 100 or whatever we want to do, um, we weight them um, within each category. So in this case, the best counter movement jump um, is 35% of the total power score, broad jump is 35%, and wing gate peak power is the remaining 30%. Um, and the raw values will kind of dictate how that goes. And we have this for all of our categories. There are a couple more that you could add if you wanted to. And then we weight all of our categories for an overall score. So this is kind of a weighting of metrics and categories area, if you will. And you just type in the numbers in here, and these numbers um, get applied to the dashboard, but you'll find out how all that works uh, later. And if I go back home, now I'm going to go through the colors and conditional formatting panel. And this is also interacting with the dashboard. And what we have here, it's a lot to look at, but we have arbitrary values that we've set, and these can be anything, um, for distinctions among groups. For example, if we look at this cell right here, this means that any athlete that's in the U18 group that jumps over 28 inches, or 28 as the number in counter-movement jump, um, we want to color them gold, and we consider that elite. And anyone in the U20 group that jumps over 30 inches, we want them to be gold. And anyone that's between 26 and 28, we want them to be silver in the U18 group. And anyone between 24 and 26, we want them to be this um, bronze color in the U18 group. And so hopefully you see kind of how that works. We, we design this um, for each of our metrics um, that we care about. And we refer to them in, in, in our dashboards um, so that everything is colored appropriately in the way that we in the way that we want um, them to be colored. So that's how that works and now I'm going to go back home and now we'll get into the custom scoring panel. This is really complex and it doesn't look great but it is extremely powerful so I hope that you can appreciate that. Um, I'll try to explain it the best that I can. So I just went in here. What we're looking at right here is we're looking at the metric counter movement jump best, which you know you perform three trials of counter movement jump, and maybe you want the the best value as one of your key metrics, key performance indicators. And let's look at column G. We're looking at the group, the U18 group. Um, this is their average for that metric in our data set. This is the standard deviation um, for that data set for this metric. And when we say, I'm going to move all the way down now, everything in black you can edit, everything in gray is just giving you information. And I don't know where to start here. So let's do a set min and max score. Um, what we're doing is we're creating scores on a scale that we decide on. So in this case we're looking at, we're coinciding the metric value with a score that goes between 0 and 100. That's our scoring system. And maybe you don't want uh, to show zeros in scores um, because it makes athletes feel bad. Maybe you want the range to be 50 to 100 or 30 to 100. Um, that would mean that the minimum possible score would be a 30 or a 50. Um, or you might have a totally different system. You might want scores from 1 to 5. Um, it's totally up to you. You set uh, the, the visible, the display scores that, that you want to see. And then what we have is, let's go to the standard uh, deviation. So the way that we've set this up is that you can manipulate three different things. You can manipulate the number of standard deviations. You can manipulate arbitrary values. You can choose arbitrary values. Or you can choose the maximum and minimum uh, values in the data set to distinguish your scores. So what I mean by that is, if I were to pick, let's say, I'm going to set, this is arbitrary values here, I'm going to set the top, um, the bet, so I'm going to set the best to 35 and the worst to 10. 
Now what that means is that if you jump over 35 inches, you get whatever this max score is, the best score. So you get a 100. If you jump less than 10 inches, then you get a 0, or whatever the minimum score is. And everything in between is normalized. So I'm just going to scroll down for a second. So right now, we have 35 inches as the top score. So if you get 35, you get a 100. And as we go down through this list, we can see that if you jump 31.5 inches, you would get a score of 86 based on the criteria that we've set. And if we keep on going down to the bottom, if you jump less than 10 inches, you get a zero. So that's how this scoring system works. And it's set on ARB. That's why it works like that. That means arbitrary values. We set arbitrary values. The other, one of the other methods that we could use is number standard de deviations or z-scores. They're the same thing. So let's say that we set the number of standard deviations to two. Now this shows us our good cutoff and our bad cutoff for our maximum and minimum scores. This means that anyone that jumps over 34.17 inches gets a 100 or the maximum score. Anyone jumps below 21.54 inches gets the minimum score, which right now is zero. And if I switch this here, this is where we choose which type we want to use to STD. That's probably a bad word for it, a bad acronym. Um, but now we see that the top score, 34.17, you get a 100. And if we scroll down, it normalizes um, to our data set. And if you jump less than 21.54, which is two standard deviations away from the average, or a z-score of minus two, then you get a zero. So I'm scrolling back up. And the last option is MM, which just stands for maximum and minimum values in the data set. So if you just want the scores to be normalized by the highest and lowest values, you can do that too. So if I go to MM, we can see that, well, here are the cutoffs for MM. We know that the highest jump is 32 inches in our data set, and the lowest is 19.8. And now the scores will be normalized to that. So 32 up there. and 19.8 down there and this is just for the u18 group uh, so we're doing this by group uh, so you could set something different for the u20 group if you want you could set totally arbitrary cutoffs for every single metric for every single group i have all in there too um, just in case but that's how this system works and i know it's a lot to take in hopefully um, you understand what's going on here i'm going to set this back to ARB for now. Um, and remember, the gray stuff you're just looking at, it kind of gives some, some values there that some of you may care about, some of you might not. And I'm going to go back home. What else do we have? The list panel. Uh, so this is just, it is, it's just lists. It's lists of things that we use in our dashboards. So the, why, the reason why we have these lists is because if we add new data, um, those new data items get added to these lists automatically and then we use those lists in our dashboard so it's kind of a way of automatically updating our, our dashboards maybe I'll go through I'll just show you an example list or two um, so we have a list of athletes if we add new athletes automatically and we'll see there's a formula in here a, another athlete will get added into this list and this list goes on very very long more than you would need it to same thing with dates and events and um, other things that that are relevant to us. Um, typically, we use these lists and drop-down menus and things like that. So that's how this works. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm 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 happy to help in any way that I can. And what you've seen here, I'm just going to go back to the team dashboard or the data entry really quickly again. So I have data in here. The way that you add data to this data set or the profiles data set, whatever you want is you simply go to the bottom of it and you type things in. Um, this is relatively large, um, so I went to the bottom and if I just type in a name, I'm just gonna type in Adam. Um, we have some calculations in there um, that might not work, but we can type in the data testing and et cetera, um, and maybe I'll add Adam to the profile list too. I'm just gonna type in Adam. And now, for example, if I go back to my list, Let's go back to our list. Adam is now an athlete in our database. Um, 
so that's how you add records to this. Um, and there are some errors going on because Adam doesn't have much profile data for our calculations or any of that data. And the way that you remove it is you can click on a cell or a range of cells and you can right click at least on my computer and delete delete table rows. The other way to do it um, and you would only do this if you know that there's nothing to the left or the right of the table is you can click on the row over here and do the same thing right click delete. So I'm going to do it that way delete that it's gone from there and if I go to my profiles I'll do it the other way I click here right click delete delete table rows and it's gone and now I'll just go back to my list um, just, to, just to show you that it's no longer existing so if I go back Adam is no longer a name in my database so that's kind of how how it works that's how you add and, and remove data and Again, let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help however I can. Thanks for watching these videos and have fun.